The sport of boxing has many legends. Muhammad Ali. Mike Tyson. Floyd Mayweather. But before them all was a boxer who earned the title legend both in and out of the ring. was possibly the greatest fighter who ever lived. Uh, he was a man who weighed anywhere from 145 to 160 pounds, and within a short time, very few heavyweights would risk their undefeated record or risk the title against him. Who could call a round better than Ali? One time he comes out for a round, and I don't know, second or third, and he touches gloves, and the opponent says, who are you touching gloves for? This is the last round. He said, for you it is. Sam Langford was born in Weymouth Falls in Nova Scotia in 1886 to former slaves. Due to an abusive father and poverty, Sam left home and went to Boston. Sam started fighting in an athletic club that he cleaned for, winning his first state amateur championship at 15, which would convince him to go pro as a welterweight, and would fight 252 times with 99 knockouts and 233 wins. Sam was known in the ring for his elite speed, agility, and determination. He would take on opponents from every weight class despite only being 5'7 and rarely weighing above 165 pounds. How have I not ever heard of this guy before? Some of his contests were 60 to 100 rounds. Nova Scotia Sam Langford was one of the greatest boxers of all time. ESPN also ranked him the second hardest puncher of all time. Small man with a big punch. Then would defeat the best of his time, including Joe Gans, the first black man to win a world championship and the greatest lightweight boxer of all time. Others included Fireman Jim Flynn and Jim Jeffries, named one of the most formidable fighting machines the prize ring ever produced. Despite his many accomplishments, Langford never won a world title. This is due to a draw between Sam and world welterweight champion Barbados Joe Walcott. Walcott and Langford would fight in a 15 round match for the title. Langford would make Walcott bleed and even brought him down to a knee in the third round, with Sam barely having any scratches on him. However, the judges would rule the fight a tie, robbing Sam of his world title chances. But Sam wasn't done yet. He started his career the healthy, lightweight, but he always had his eyes set on going for the heavyweight division. One of Sam's toughest opponents was Jack Johnson, an up-and-coming heavyweight star. One of the most formidable fighting machines in boxing history. A man who was to stand overwhelmingly supreme above the other fighters of his era. At his best, he was a superb athlete and considered by many the best defensive fighter in the sport. Sam would lose in 15 rounds to Johnson, who outweighed him by 35 pounds. Sam's last attempt at a title would be against Stanley Ketchell and Jack Johnson. Jack Johnson would be arrested on a racially motivated charge. And Ketchell would be killed in a jealous rage over a woman. Langford went on to compete all over the world, with many fighters refusing to get in the ring with him. Some because he was black, and others just because they feared him. It sure was a different era in so many ways. Record keeping wasn't very good, but apparently he was in 200 to 600 fights. Sam's age eventually caught up with him, and after two serious injuries would be blind in both eyes, he would be banned from boxing to protect his health. To his lavish lifestyle, Sam would lose all of his money from boxing and be left a broken man, blind in both eyes. M. Langford disappeared from public view until 1944. He was found by a man named Al Laney, who tracked him down and found him living alone and blind in a barren rented room in Harlem. Laney would raise enough money for Sam to allow him to live comfortably for the rest of his life. Eventually, he disappeared, and he was found in the early 50s, half-starved, living in a cellar in Boston. And uh, they interviewed him, 
And Langford was an unusual man. He was never bitter. He said, well, I've got my guitar. I've got my memories. I'm okay. Sam Langford, a boxing legend.